The Religion of China, Confucianism and Taoism is a sociological study by Max Weber, written in 1916. It is part of Weber's broader research on the sociology of religion and an examination of the major world religions and their impact on society and culture. In this work, Weber focuses on China, specifically on the religious and philosophical traditions of Confucianism and Taoism, and how these have shaped Chinese society's ethics, attitude towards life, and socio-economic organization. Confucianism, as described by Weber, is not a religion in the sense of worshipping a god or gods, but rather a moral and ethical system based on the teachings of Confucius, who lived from 551 to 79 BCE. Confucianism's primary focus is on proper conduct, social harmony, and the importance of hierarchical relationships. These relationships, known as the five constant relationships, include ruler to subject, father to son, husband to wife, elder brother to younger brother, and friend to friend. The philosophy emphasizes the role of the gentleman or junzi, an individual who cultivates moral virtue and righteousness and who acts as a model for society. Weber explores how the Confucian value system encouraged a bureaucratic state structure that was meritocratic to some extent. Through the imperial examination system, which tested a candidate's knowledge of Confucian texts, individuals had the opportunity to enter the civil service. This system was designed to select the most capable administrators, but over time, it also had the effect of reinforcing social stratification and creating a conservative intellectual elite that may have stifaced innovation. Weber delves into the character of Confucianism that he describes as this worldly. Rather than focusing on the afterlife or transcendental ideas, Confucianism is concerned with establishing a well-ordered society here and now. The Confucian ethic promotes loyalty and filial piety and stresses the importance of maintaining harmony and status quo in a highly structured society. This resulted in a status-based rather than a class-based system, where the focus was on maintaining one's societal role and the social order over individual ambitions or change. In comparison, Taoism presents a stark contrast. Weber explains, focusing on individual spirituality and the pursuit of balance and harmony with the natural order. Taoism is attributed to the semi-legendary figure of Laozi and revolves around the concept of Tao or the Way, which is an indefinable force that underlies and unites the universe. The core Taoist text, the Tao Te Ching, promotes the idea of Wu Wei, non-action or effortless action, suggesting that individuals should align themselves with the Tao by minimizing their desires and interventions in the world. Taoism's emphasis lies in mysticism, simplicity, and spontaneity, standing in contrast to the pragmatic and social ordering focus of Confucianism. In investigating the impact of these two philosophies, Weber examines the tension between Confucian rationality and the mystical elements of Taoism. He sees Confucianism as fostering a practical and orderly approach to life, while Taoism encourages retreat from civic engagement and a focus on the esoteric and individual enlightenment. This dichotomy, argues Weber, created a division in the way individuals in Chinese society approached social responsibility versus personal salvation. Weber scrutinizes how these differing worldviews have influenced China's economic ethos and development. He notes that Confucianism, with its emphasis on traditionalism and adherence to familial and social hierarchy, did not provide fertile ground for the development of capitalism. This is contrary to the Protestant ethic in the West, which Weber suggests had a significant role in fostering a capitalist spirit. Confucianism's discouragement of profit-seeking and its lack of a strong concept of a calling inhibits the kind of economic behavior characterized by capitalism. As a result, economic activity in China tended to remain small-scale, familial, and focused on subsistence. On the other hand, Taoism, with its asceticism and withdrawal from worldly affairs, was viewed by Weber as inward-looking, and ultimately passive concerning economic matters. Though it can be argued that Taoism embodies principles that might ostensibly support individual enterprise, such as spontaneity and adaptability, Weber suggests it lacks the rational and ethical framework that could lead to dynamic economic change. Moreover, Weber examines the political implications of these philosophies. He argues that Confucianism and Taoism have both facilitated and hindered the development of certain types of authority and governance. The former, 
with its hierarchical view of society, supported a stable bureaucracy. Still, it also led to a conventionalism that may have been inimical to political innovation. Taoism offered an alternative, but its focus on quietism was, according to Weber, not conducive to the development of a political or legal rationality capable of supporting a modern state. Throughout the text, Weber employs his analysis of China to make broader arguments about the role of religion and philosophy in shaping historical, economic, and social structures. He consistently explores the ways in which religious values and ethics intersect with mundane concerns, such as politics and economics, and how such interrelations shape the trajectories of societies. In The Religion of China, Confucianism, and Taoism, Weber illuminates the complex interplay between religious belief, ethical systems, and societal organization in one of the world's oldest civilizations. By assigning particular characteristics to Confucianism and Taoism and their influence on the social fabric, Weber attempts to understand why, in his view, China did not follow the same path toward modern capitalism and rational legalism as the West. His thesis reflects a search for universality in how cultures respond to the challenges of social cohesion, economic activity, and political authority through the prism of their most profound philosophical and religious traditions. In conclusion, Weber's work on Confucianism and Taoism is a seminal work that applies the methods of sociology to understanding the relationship between religion, culture, and social structure in China. His conclusions shed light on why China at his time had taken a different path compared to the West in terms of economic and political development. It's important to note that Weber's interpretations have been subject to criticism and debate, and contemporary scholarship may view his analysis through the lens of the social and cultural biases of his own era. Nonetheless, the religion of China, Confucianism, and Taoism stands as an influential and pioneering work in the sociology of religion and comparative historical study.